Hey guys, Old Guy Gaming here, back again with another MTG Arena video. And tonight we're going to be doing CBG's Mythic White. So, another better, more respectable <laughs> YouTuber that I genuinely do follow and enjoy his content, uh, Converco Blue, or CBG, affectionately known as, uh, posted a video recently which I found fascinating. Uh, he is obviously a much better magic player than I am and he is playing in a mythic level with This particular deck that he showed on his video, which is a mono white deck that consists specifically and mostly just common and uncommon white cards And I thought that that was amazing to see someone playing at that high level of competitive play in the mythic ranks playing with a bunch of common and uncommon cards and doing really well and I said hey that's something I think I can do. Uh, I'm not that great of a, I'm not that good of a magic player, but darn it, if it's a bunch of common and uncommon cards, that sounds like a budget deck to me, and I think I'd like to give that one a shot. Now, there is one caveat, of course, in his deck he was running Loris, which I've chosen not to do in my version of the deck. That's pretty much the only thing that I've taken out is Loris, but I did want to see how well I could do with his deck. So here we go with the deck as CBG presented it. So the basic premise behind this deck is it is a Boggles deck, or otherwise known as a duck and cover deck, uh, meaning you get one creature, you make it really, really big, and you do everything in the world to help it preventing from dying. Your opponent's going to try their best to kill your best creature. You're not going to let that happen, and you're going to win the War of Attrition. That is kind of the premise behind this deck. So, our creatures that we're going to try to hang on to, uh, mostly we're looking for like things like Healer Sock. Healer Sock is going to do us really well. These are the creatures we're looking for. Ginger Brute, also going to be one of the ones that's going to be coming in. And the idea is going to be, we're just going to build these creatures up bigger and bigger, and then protect them when people try to kill them or destroy them. So some of our protections, we also have, you know, as you know, I've never get this, mis I never pronounce this right. Life's Bounty. That's what I'm going to call it. Life's Bounty is a one-on-one -on -one with lifelink, and you can sacrifice it to give a creature you control or enchantment uh, protection from a specific color. This is one of the ways that you're going to be able to keep protecting your gigantic healer's hawk. And then we've got a bunch of auras that we're going to put on and just make it bigger and bigger and bigger. So Glaring Ages, for example, enchants creature, one-one, or it, once it enters the battlefield, you tap an opponent's creature, which is super useful, especially if you're going to be going in there. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus three. Now, this is going to get important later because there is a, another one we're going to talk about that's going to allow you to do damage with your defense so these little one threes are going to add up really really quick uh god's willing is an instant speed will give you protection from a color again protecting your gigantic healer's hawk if possible healer's hawk flying lifelink so not only are you getting the damage of this gigantic creature but you're also gaining a ton of life on top of it chimera's blessing we're going to go for another um Protection spell gains plus two plus two until end of turn. Enchanted creature also, uh, if it's a creature or in, if it's an enchanted creature, which it most likely will be, or an enchantment creature, uh, it also gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Also super useful. Sentinel eyes plus one plus one again. It also has vigilance, which is also awesome. You can also recast this for escape, which is not such a bad idea either. Solid footing. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one. As long as a creature has vigilance, it's assigned combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. So this is the one we're going to we're going to be going into. So Sentinel Eyes is going to give vigilance. Solid footing is going to allow to do damage with all of the, the defense as well as the offense. So that's really real we're going for. Ginger Brute can be unblockable. Uh, so as long as your opponent doesn't have creatures with haste, you're just going to blow, blow right through them. Uh, we have multiple ways to give protection from a color, though, too, which will also help us getting all that damage in. And the creme de la creme, all the glitters. As you can tell, everything in here is either an enchantment or an artifact, with the exception of Healer's Hawk uh, and the lands. So these creatures are going to get really large really fast. Uh, and last but not least, we're going to go Sentinel's Mark, again going on with the uh, the, uptick to the uptick to the defense. Uh, this also grants Vigilance. It's got plus one, plus two enchantment as well. And if it enters the battlefield during your main phase, uh, it gets lifelink until end of turn. So that's the deck. That's all he did. The only other addition to the deck that CBG went with was... Um, obviously Loris, Loris casting all these low casting cost spells. We don't have anything larger than a two casting cost spell, so we are running low on the mana for 20. So, uh, I do want to thank, uh, if he ever sees it, I'm a huge fan. Thank you. Love all the work that you do. I <laughs> really appreciate it. Um, but I do want to thank you guys. Uh, if, if you like the video, of course, and like the content, let me know in the comments down below. Like, subscribe. We are ever dangerously close to the channel's lifetime goal of a thousand subscribers so I can get that glorious cardboard play button from YouTube. So, all right, let's go and play some games with it and see how well we do. Now, if you want to see the deck played in the hands of a professional, we are definitely not doing ranked play with this deck. Um, I know he did. Um, CBG had no problems whatsoever playing this in ranked play. He played it in mythic ranked play. 
Um, but yeah, if you want to see this deck played in the hands of professional, I'll leave a link in the com in the comment section or the description down below to his original video. It's actually really fascinating. I love watching his videos. He's actually, he's, he is one of my favorite, um, MTG arena YouTubers, uh, uh by far, uh, him merchant, uh, there's a couple other good ones. Um, but those are the ones I usually go to that release every single day that I'm always like, Ooh, what did they play today? Doodle scries. Ooh, multiple ginger brutes. Ooh, this should be interesting. Uh, let's throw them off the old ginger brute on turn one. Uh, companions, by the this point in time that you're seeing this video in play, um, we will know what the ultimate uh, decision was from wizards. Uh, no, I'm going to save that actually for my healer sock. Uh, ultimate decision was for, um, for companions, what they decided to do with them. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I would do with them. Um, I don't feel that the entire, I don't feel like the idea is inherently broken. Um, I just think that there are better ways to accomplish what they're going for. Now what we need is an all the gl all the glitters, and now we are going to be sitting on easy street. Now I am in fear, of course, of the board wipe cometh. Yeah, so I don't know how to fix companions. To be perfectly honest with you, I think it's an interesting idea to start off with. I think that some of them, however, um, this one in particular, Yorian, um, has become problematic in the game. I'm going to hold on to these uh, again, ever fearing this board wipe that I know is coming. Omen of the Sun, cool. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use their ability and say, you can't block me. You can't block me. Bet you weren't expecting that now, were you? And all the glitters and we're actually kind of sitting pretty. If he decides to board wipe here, which he very well might. Um, you can have it. Because I suspect the board wipe's coming. Yep, Shadow of the Skies is coming. So, each player controls... Destroy that creature. I am going to protection that from white. I do not need any more land. Hmm, how did that not do that? Interesting. We'll escape the gods, will I? Oh yeah, no, dude. We do want that on there. And we'll take out... Is it two cards? Oh, that's what it is. It's two cards. I totally missed that. Sure. So I guess protections, well, yeah, no, because it is a board wipe. I guess it would make sense that it doesn't go with grass. I actually wasted that God's Willing. That's actually kind of sad now. I earned that. All right, so what we're really looking for is a God's Willing or another protection spell would be lovely. Yeah, he's just going to keep bouncing that. I've got a distinct feeling that we are going to lose this one because the Yorian train is on the roll. Although... That changes things a hair. So... Ah... Uh, all right, we're going to concede because he's going to bounce that. We're going to lose all of our enchantments. And that is going to do it. Ah. Well, I guess we'll find out. Uh, by the time this video comes out, we'll know what they did with companions and if they are still a viable source or not. Um, I've got a distinct feeling that they're not going to completely annihilate or blow up the mechanic. I think there are some good ones. We might see individual bans. I don't know. Because there's a lot of... There are a lot of the companions that aren't necessarily bad for the game. I think Loris... Questionable. 
um, for the game. I think Yorin is another one that's questionable for the game. But there's plenty of other the companions that like have currently no effect whatsoever on the meta whatsoever. So I don't know that they're going to do an entire board sweeping. Hmm, no creatures. That is a no thank you. Still no creatures. That is a no thank you. And this is going to be the last time we do this. There we go. So we're going to have to drop. Ugh. Uh, we'll keep five. I think we might. Oh, we might drop that, and we might drop a land. That's brutal to say. Um, but yeah, there's so many that are inconsequential to the, the meta right now that there's no reason for them to actually... Am I playing in a mirror match? Am I honestly playing in a mirror match? It certainly looks it. It certainly looks it. We are genuinely playing in a mirror match. That's awesome. Alright, so neither of you have haste. I am going to keep the gods willing. Let's see where it goes from there. Just in case. Now, if we were playing the same deck, we doesn't actually have any removal. Um, no, you can do that. <laughs> we will double all that glitters directly onto the ginger brood. I've got a sneaking suspicion he's not going to want to take that. Sure. Now, the downside, of course, he's got Loris. He's going to pull it right back out of the graveyard. And that's where, that is where the difference is. Oh, no, he fable passage. That means I'm going to get through for at least one. And unfortunately, I can't God's willing my way through this. Because they have color, they have no color, they are colorless artifacts, I cannot actually get through that. I know Loris is coming, so at least I can do is at least kill the 1-1 one, one that's coming through. Because that's what he's going to do. He's going to block here. He's going to let that go. Okay. Okay. I guess he's not really that concerned, and I just did notice he did pull the green, so I guess this isn't necessarily a why would you not put Loris down? I'm actually really surprised that that was his response. Stone Cold Serpent for one? I'm curious if this is... I'm really confused. Sure. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I was going to say, at some point in time, he's going to have to start giving some of these up. I'm, yeah, I was going to say, I'm guessing that this is an enchantment stack. This is a, a weird Selesnia build, but it's all built around artifacts, and we haven't seen, like, the main cards out of it yet. So if he attacks with Stone Cold Serpent, I will absolutely block with the Ginger Brute. I have a sneaking suspicion he's not going to do that. No. Because I'm still waiting for anything. Anything at all. Solid footing. Perfect. So, which way does he go? I assume he's going to block the 1-1. One, one. Now, 
Now he has an endless supply of, well, not really. He's only got two in there. God's willing. Why is he casting God's willing now? Yeah, because you can't use it. You're in the same position that I am. Is that a bad idea? To go for the scry? <laughs> and he calls it, I guess whatever he scryed, he didn't get. Okay, so I was under the genuine impression that we were looking at a mirror match. An interesting Selesnya deck, um, I think built upon some of the similar principles. Um, but we just never saw whatever his payoff was. And I'm really surprised he didn't cast Loris a lot earlier. Um, I guess ultimately in the end, he probably would have had to have sacrificed it at some point in time. Um, but that was interesting, actually kind of going against another artifact to have two God's Willing sitting in your hand going, wow, I can't actually use these. So that was an interesting one. All right, we'll try to get one more in. I don't. I have to admit, I genuinely get a little squeamish about plagiarizing other decks from other uh, YouTubers. Um, this, this is the reason why I intend to. If you saw the thumbnail by now, you would already know that I've already given him full credit uh, for this deck. I don't. I, it makes me feel icky um, to not do genuinely my own decks, or at least decks that I've at least changed and modified. This is a blatant ripoff of the deck that he did a video on. So there is some of that that just kind of makes you feel icky. Um, so, like, I enjoy playing the deck. It's a ton of fun. But <laughs> I do want to make sure that, you know, that's why there'll be a link in the description below for CBG's video. It's much better. Um, and a much higher level of magic play. Priest of the Forgotten Gods. Cool. Guess what I've got. Um, so he's not going to be able to. Yeah, I think I'm going here. He's not going to be able to block. Even if he cast, he would have to cast two creatures to get rid of it. So I want to make sure that I'm not like losing it here. Oh, there are the two creatures. Nice. I did not see that coming. I should have seen that in common because I was a huge fan of the last stop reaver whenever it first came in and he didn't spend it. What? What? He's going to do it now. You ready? Before I swing with it, he's going to do it now. And since I haven't attacked yet. It was hexproof. Couldn't target it. What? Wait. How? How? Target creature is plus two, plus two, and ten returned. If it's an enchanted creature, which it was, or an enchanted or enchantment creature, which it was not, uh, it also gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. I don't understand how that worked. Like, what just happened? Um, yeah, I'm flushing that one down the toilet because I don't, that wasn't, I don't, hmm. Let me know in the comments down below because I know I've been uh, accused of, and rightfully so, for not reading the card. But in my mind, that was, it was going to target a creature and destroy it. If it's hexproof and it's still in the stack, I should be able to give it hexproof. There are plenty of spells in the history of magic and arena, for that matter, that have granted hexproof to a creature that prevented effects like that. So unless I'm reading the card severely incorrectly, which is entirely possible, I don't get that. I also don't know why he didn't do it on the turn before, like when he cast the last stop reserves in the first place. If that was his intention to do that in the first place, I should just cast God willing. That's what I should have done. Ah, that's sort of semi frustrating. Sorry to go tilt a little on that one. Like it's either, if it's my own stupidity, I'll take that, because <laughs> I am willing to accept the fact that sometimes I don't read the cards completely and don't understand how that mechanic works. I'm not sure what I missed on that. So by all means, those of you no creatures, that is a mulligan. Still no creatures, that is a mulligan. What is going on? There we go. All the creatures. Sure. So I think we're gonna pitch one of those. Um, oh, uh, yeah, I think we're going to drop the glaring Aegis for now. That is disappointing. The upside is, is 
there isn't anything with a higher casting cost of two, so we genuinely have all the things we need. Like, legitimately, with three mana, we have everything we need. We can cast everything on our deck at this point. That's frustrating, though. That I've had that happen twice. Oh, he caught me with my... He caught me with my pants down on that one because I did not have that. I will take the Vigilance, though. What is going on? We're getting... I'm blaming CBG specifically for this. He made this deck popular. Now everyone wants to beat it. I'm getting all the decks that beat it. Yeah, here's another good one right here. How often do you genuinely see this uh, this companion? Like I said, they're not all fundamentally broken. I don't feel that the mechanic is fundamentally broken. I think there are problem cards inside there. Sure. I will not disagree with that. Um, I think that there are a few that probably need to be addressed and might be listed on a ban list. But beyond that, I don't know. It's a cool mechanic. So I don't want to punish the entire... <laughs> The entire companion mechanic and never ever print it again because it was that bad of an idea. I recognize there's some weird... It just needs cleaned up a little. I have a feeling this is a Winona deck. That's exactly what this is. Why? No starting card in your deck and more than... This. Eh, maybe not. Maybe not. Cool. Double strike. That's gonna stink. And not much I can do about that. That was really cool. And now we're going to get mana screwed. Alright, I think we're gonna call this one already because we're we're they have a whole lot more coming. I'll give you one more game with it. I know I said I wasn't gonna do the <laughs> <laughs> late rising but i also genuinely believe with fun decks like this you should be able to at least have a little bit more fun with them and go out on a win plus i need to play five more lands five more lands i'd like a game where i don't have to mulligan twice to get a creature that would be kind of nice considering there's 12 in the deck that really shouldn't be that hard speak of the devil hey look at that I'm generally debating kicking the planes out, actually, because I only genuinely need two. Let's go, Gingerbread. Go! No companions. Uh, are we going to be looking at some Simic Ramp? I bet ya! No, I want to keep it open. <laughs> Nothing cool. Swing away, my good friend. I'll take the lifelink of nothing else. It's literally no cost to me to do that. Another Arbor Hill Grazer. Those are such a great card. Such a great mana door. Does really well in mono green decks, actually. Chimera's Blessing. Okay, so I have all of the things I need to protect. No. I actually want to get some of those Grazers out of the way. Or not. Hmm. I'm expecting... Interesting! Elemental deck. Is he going there? I say no good, sir. And let's just say black, just for fun. Oh, I do not need the land. Wasn't he black? 
Oh, it was blue. I'm an idiot. Add that to my list of things that I do wrong. If I can only give it trample. Four, six, Vigilance, Haste, Lifelink? Cool. He's going to try to do damage. Sure. Got to remember blue. How did I miss that? Such an idiot sometimes. Two gods willings. Cool. Sure. Haha. -ha. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. If it is an enchanted creature, which it is, it also gains hexproof and indestructible at the end of turn. I'm still baffled by that. Multiple Chimera's Blessings. Come on, do it. Try to double block it. Do it. Do it. Do it. You know you want to. Okay. My one ginger root. Sure. I'm not going to make the same mistake I made last time. Blue, please. Sure, another ginger brute's perfect. Neo form, he's going for something. What are you going for, big man? What are you going for? Four? What do you got at five in the elemental range? Cavalier of Thorns, I was just going to say. Ooh, this is a... This should be interesting. Good thing I have an answer for that. Um, yeah, I can just go... Can't block me except for haste. And just punch you in the face. Look at the top five cards, you're going to put any number of permanent cards from them to your hand. Exile it. See, that's how you do a gigantic monstrous creature. So you can just go, that's a gigantic fetch. <sighs> sure. Block the Cavalier of Thorns. I would assume... Hmm, I don't want to assume here. Oh, Cavalier. Okay, that works too. That's okay, because I've got responses for you, my friend. Come on over. It'll be fine. Sure, let's do that. So that's nine. Oh, let's tap that bird, not that it matters. So, unless I'm mistaken, I may actually have him. He's gonna have enough mana to really pump, well, no, not really, because when Cavaliers of Thorns comes down, he's only gonna, be, he's not gonna be able to pump it up because you need red mana for that. And it doesn't have haste. I should be able to bull through him. If he tries killing it, I've got Chimera's Blessing that I can actually go through and prevent that from happening. Maybe? Maybe. I don't want to speak too soon. 
There'll be a gigantic board wipe. There'll be something, something that goes off here that will ruin this for me. Sure, he'll give these creatures. These guys are going to come through. I'll take out the Cavalier of Thorns in the process because it'll be funny. I think he's beginning to come to come to fruition here. He's beginning to realize, like, all Ginger Brute has to do is pay one mana and punch him in the face. I think that's what's happening here. Seven does twice damage. Hexproof. See, look, that's how that's supposed to work. Yes! <laughs> Some really neat, cool little elemental deck, and we got through with a bunch of commons and uncommons. So, CBG, you know what you're talking about, even though I can't pilot your deck very well. I did have a ton of fun with it, so I do want to thank you personally. And I want to thank you for turning in, tuning in and watching this. I do appreciate it. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, drop comments down below. Let me know where I did wrong. Let me know why that one spell didn't go off. I'd really like to go back and find out why that is, because that's really irritating that that didn't work, considering it just worked right there. I don't know why it didn't work before. So in any case, I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, guys, we shall see you in the arena. This video was brought to you in no small part by our patrons. If you would like to help out the channel, go to www.patreon.com slash oldguygamingmtga. And thank you for your support.